Good afternoon. We're joined by members of the Vegas Golden Knights, Colorado Avalanche, Dallas Stars, and Vancouver Canucks. Speaking for the Canucks, Captain Bo Horvat. For the Stars, Jason Dickinson. For the Knights, Ryan Reeves. And from the Avalanche, Pierre-Edouard Belmar and Nazem Kadri. We'll now take questions. Brendan Batchelor, Sportsnet, go ahead. Uh, first of all, this question's for Bo. Just uh, your thoughts on the decision that the players have made today as a group and just sort of take us inside the conversations you guys have had that have led to this point. Yeah, I think you know, it was a really important decision and I think it was the, the right decision to make. Um, you know, we needed to, uh, to do something and make a stand and I think this is the appropriate um, form of action that we're doing right now. And I couldn't be proud of our our group of guys to, to come up with this solution and um, you know regarding thoughts and you know the stuff that we went over this morning we you know met as a group and and went over to, to Vegas and we met as um, you know as a group there and, and thought this was going to be the best form of action to take and um, you know I'm really proud of, of what we come up with and um, you know we definitely think this is the best uh, best thing to do go to Ryan Clark the athletic this question is for Nazem here, Edward and Ryan. What does this day mean to the three of you? What does this moment mean to the three of you to know that the league is doing something and standing behind you are your peers in a united front? Uh, you know, I think I think if you look around this room, um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of white athletes in here, and I think that's the statement that's being made right now. Um, you know, it's great that the NBA did this and the MLB and the WNBA, you know, they have a lot of black players in those leagues. But for, you know, all these athletes in here to take a stand and say, you know what, we, we see the problem too and we stand behind you. You know, I, I go to war with these guys and I, I hate their guts on the ice, but I couldn't be more proud of these guys. It's, uh, you know, the statement that they've made today is, is something that's going to last. You know, these two days isn't going isn't gonna to fix anything. But, um, the conversation and, and, the, and the statement that's been made is very powerful, especially coming from uh, from this league. I'm, I mean, I agree. Uh, just to reiterate, I think this is a big enough statement. Just all these guys sticking together. I've never, you know, I got so much more respect for every single player in this league um, by, by doing something like this. And obviously systemic racism, we can use these next couple days to further educate ourselves and, and try to you know, for the betterment of society. So, uh, you know, it's something that needed to be done. And, you know, I think hockey's a, a team sport, a team game, and every single one of these guys are, are on the same page and, and stand with each other. Um, same here. I mean, uh, it's not an easy, easy subject. Uh, it's an awkward subject for a lot of people. And the fact that we are all here together right now, uh, it's going to bring a lot of awareness. And it's going to be a lot of question asked, and it's going to be able to to help everybody educate themselves, educate the people to ask the question, and the fact that everybody is right here with us, standing up together, um, it's huge. Um, it's a great unity. Take the next one, Josh Clipperton, Canadian Press. Hey guys, for uh, Naz, Pierre Edouard, and Jason, um, just with the benefit of hindsight, did, did it feel right to play last night? Like, were, were you reservations when you were on the ice playing that game? Um, yeah, it did, but in the same time, uh, it happened really fast. I don't want to, you know, give the blame to anybody, but by the time we got to the ring, games were on, and the news came up that uh, the NBA postponed, so uh, it didn't feel right. But I feel that uh, after reflecting on it and us being here together, it's, uh, it's the best response we could have. Greg Wyshynski, ESPN. Thanks a lot. Hey, Ryan, uh, Kevin Shattenkirk over on the Eastern side was talking about the influence that you had for a lot of these guys. What, what was your message about why it was important not to play? Um, you know, I think it was just what I said. I, I think the message coming from a predominantly white league has a lot bigger impact, not bigger impact, but it has a very strong impact when it's coming from players like this. You know. Most of these guys have never lived through some of the stuff that black athletes have. You know, uh, they don't go through those those day-to-day -day things that 
they feel that racism, or they've, they, they've seen the racism, racism, or their family's gone through it. But for them to say, look, we see what's going on in society, and we, we disagree with it, and something has to change right now, that, that was my message. And I think, I, I, you know, I said that standing together here is, it's, it's just, it's more powerful than anything you can do. We're in a bubble. There's nothing you can do outside the bubble right now. And we can't change anything because we're stuck in here. But together in here right now, that's, that's what we can do. Patrick Johnston, Post Media. Uh, Bo, can you maybe just walk us through the thinking this morning? You know, what were you guys thinking about? Why, why today? Why not yesterday? Why not Tuesday? What changed? Um, no, I think just, uh, again, we, we talked about it um, in the room this morning. And, you know, we, we really, you know, obviously realizing the impact it's having on the world and, and around the sports communities and obviously, you know, seeing what was going on with basketball and the MLB and, uh, and everything that, you know, we, we talked about as a group and then wanted to go over and, and talk to, uh, to, to Ryan in, in Vegas. And um, we just all thought it was the, the best course of action. And, you know, everything that Brian's has been saying, you know, that we need to come together and obviously this, this stuff, kind of stuff can't stand and, and that we need to educate ourselves and, and, and realize what's going on in the world. And, um, you know, I think he's hit the nail right on the head that, you know, there needs to be change. And, you know, us being all together here, you know, as one uh, definitely shows, uh, you know, strength in the hockey community as long as well as, you know, in, in the world. Take the next one, Saad Youssef, The Athletic. Hey, Nazem, I'm just uh, curious, you know, with the hoodie that you have on, is there a particular importance with that for you? Obviously, no Muhammad Ali stood for and things like that. Uh, does that mean anything special to you? Uh, I mean, obviously, he's, he's an icon, someone I looked up to. Um, probably my favorite athlete. I mean, I think, uh, you know, he was definitely a role model and as leaders up here um, with the NHL. You know, I think we have a, a unique opportunity to, uh, to try to create sustainable change. And, you know, that's what this is all about. It's not just one or two guys. It's, you know, every single player being on the same page and, and sticking together. And, you know, morally and ethically, this is, you know, this is the right thing to do. Take the next one, Sean Shapiro, The Athletic. Hey, Jason, you were kind of cut off earlier, I think, when the question was targeted to you as well. How do you look at kind of from playing last night and kind of thinking about that decision and kind of what the discussions were like today for you guys? Yeah, I think it was just a really quick turnaround for uh, the events and um, the timing for us was a difficult uh, stance to take. And um, you know what? I don't think uh, us not reacting quick enough was uh, necessarily a bad thing. We're, we're doing our, our part now and we're trying to uh, do what we can here today and tomorrow and uh, you know what we could have not played yesterday but it was such a quick turnaround that I think um, it was hard for us to start that conversation and uh, you know get it going and we, we were able to dive into it a little bit better today and uh, really open open up uh, as, a, as a group and obviously Vancouver and Vegas they, uh, they were able to open up together and then you know things stemmed from there. David Shane, Las Vegas Review Journal. Justin Emerson, Las Vegas Sun. Hi, Ryan and Jason. Since you guys uh, and Robin and Tyler knelt for the anthem a couple of weeks ago, there hasn't been a whole lot of, I guess, maybe activism on the ice since then. Is there, have you guys been wanting to do more since then? Um, you know, I think, I think when we took a knee that one day, it was, um, it was a day to you know start the conversation. Um, for me, um, I also have a lot of respect for military, and um, so you know I wanted to start the conversation of what, what's going on in, in the states right now. But um, I, I also want to stand and, and respect the people that have fought and died for this country. Um, so I, you know, I, I don't think I was planning on doing anything else on the ice. Um, I don't know if I am after this, to be honest, but um, I think this is a much more powerful message today than 
uh, anything that one, one or two or three guys can do on the ice. Yeah, exactly. I mean, nothing more needs to be said. We were able to start a, a big conversation amongst our team um, stemming from that uh, moment. So, you know, that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted to get the conversation going and um, not only amongst ourselves, but amongst uh, the country and the world. Go to Arif Dean, Mile High Sports. Hey, Nazem, I wanted to ask you, when you see the news in the NBA that LeBron James, you know, the biggest name in the league, he played a ro large role in not only postponing yesterday's games, but the Lakers, his team who has a chance to win it all, they actually voted against even playing the rest of the playoffs today uh, or yesterday. How powerful of a message does that send to you and how powerful do you think it is for you and ultimately for the rest of these guys to stand here in solidarity even though you guys are opponents on the ice first and you're all battling for the same prize? It means a lot. I mean, more than you could imagine. You know, I think just having a player of that status, being able to, uh, you know, sacrifice potentially another championship, um, you know, for something bigger than that. Uh, some things are bigger than sports and, um, you know, there comes a time where, you know, you, you got to start acting on your word. I mean, you, you can say and put up signs and, and have all that stuff, which is great. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's, you know, what, what are we really doing to make a difference? And, uh, you know, it, it's that time for action. Ian McIntyre, Sportsnet. Hi, either uh, for uh, Pierre Edward or Ryan, uh, it wasn't uh, the NBA that shut down last night's games, it was the players. And it's not NHL that's shutting down tonight's and tomorrow's games, but it's the players. Do you see this as a moment of empowerment? And do you think players will be more proactive in the future in taking a stand rather than necessarily waiting for the league to tell them what should be done? Yeah, you know, I think the best thing that happened, you know, last night I struggled with, you know, what I wanted to do, whether it was, you know, am I really going to walk out on my team and be the only guy, or is there going to be a couple guys? But I, I woke up to you know a text from Kevin Shattenkirk, and um, and he had a bunch of guys out east there, and they wanted to talk, and and then I got a text saying Vancouver wanted to talk, and you know that that I think was more powerful that it started the conversation started with white players on other teams wanting to talk, and um, you know I, I think that's the most powerful thing that happened today. And now you see us all coming together, uh, all opponents here. Um, you know, I, I hope after this, you know, I don't expect every one of these guys to go out and, you know, be, uh, you know, advocates for this for this movement. But, um, you know, I'm sure a lot of us are. And and that's that's the biggest thing. You can't just talk about it in the bubble and then go home and live your live your life. Uh, you know, you gotta you gotta start being part of it. And uh, you know, I expect lots of us to. Matt Larkin, the Hockey News. Hey, guys. Uh, this one's for, for Jason. Um, in a couple of days, the dust will settle. You guys will probably be back on the ice. So what do you do to, to make sure the message stage stays strong, um, you know, just going forward, and, and especially from the perspective of sort of um, white allyship? Sorry, can you finish or repeat the end of that? Yeah, I just said from the white perspective, in just terms of showing your allyship going forward, um, and just sort of making sure this isn't a thing that comes and goes. Yeah, I mean, like Reeve said, it's, it's tough to do a, a whole lot while we're in this bubble. Um, we can keep using our words and keep uh, trying to get it out into the media, but it's going to come down to our action once we're out of here. We've got to start doing more. Um, you know, I know Dallas, our organization, has done uh, some good work in, in uh, St. Phillips in particular, and you know we need to grow off of that stuff. We need to keep doing more. We need to keep finding more ways that we can give back into these communities and these situations to really right the wrongs that have been going on and uh, try to balance out what, what we've uh, been witnessing. Take a couple more for the guys. Himal Javeri, USA Today. So just to follow up on that question about white allyship, how are you guys planning to make changes uh, that, you know, it's been a couple of months since uh, the summer where everybody was making social media posts, the teams have had a chance to do it. Um, is this something that's going to come in waves or are there clear plans to partner with uh, black players and to take the lead with them? 
Well, I think the Hockey Diversity uh, uh, Association is a great start. You know, right there, they're, they're getting the ball rolling so, to bring the, the white allyship in and, and get us on board and help them out. And, uh, you know, I can't, I can't say that we've got a definitive plan today. Um, you know, we're, we're working on things, and this is why we need a couple of days to talk things out and, and get organized and, and really hash out a plan because, um, you know, we can talk all we want, but until we do something, it's all just words. Yeah, th th those two days are, are, we know that they're not maybe going to change everything right now, but uh, the main point is that we're all here and we are aware of what's going on and we, it has to stop. And this is a message that we're sending to our organization, the NHL, that we want to work together to, to take a better step, a different step, and making sure that this never happen again. And it's, the, the HDA has a plan, and it's up to us after the bubble and every players, the organization, to make sure that we work together uh, with our communities to make sure it just get better and better. Um, the reason why we're here right now is because there's nobody in this room happy about what's just, what is happening. And this is the key. We could change the five guys in front of the, the mic, and it would be the same answers. And that's the key. Ben Goetz, Las Vegas Review Journal. Hi, this question's for Nazem. I mean, we just heard that the HD has a plan. Can you kind of tell us what you would like to do for the rest of the bubble and beyond and what you would like to see from the NHL in the bubble and beyond? Yeah, I mean, just being a member of the HDA, I think we uh, we have certain initiatives and policies that that uh, you know we would like the NHL to act on. Um, you know, we feel that it's very reasonable, and um, you know, I, I unfortunately I can't dive too much into specifics, but um, there is a plan. And moving forward, you know, we, we want the NHL to understand that you know this is a partnership, a, a collaborative effort to uh, you know create sustainable change and. You know, moving forward, you know, it, it's going to have to be the whole league. It's going to have to be collectively, um, not just one or two guys. Strength in number is key. And, uh, you know, in order to, to make serious change, that's what's going to need it to be happening. 